Hey guys, I'm Phil Torres from the Jungle Diaries, and right now I'm holding an awkward, adorable baby macaw for science. Now we'll get back to that cutie in a minute, but first let me take you to a special place on the Tamalpata River, Peru. Okay, so we just gotta get to the other side of this island on the river. That's where the magic is. We're gonna wait it out, and then it's gonna be quite the show. What we're doing is watching some of the most beautiful birds in the world hang out in trees. But what I'm really after is when they go down to the ground and start to eat dirt. Get ready. Oh, there they go. Hang on. Yes, I said eat dirt. This colorful show is way more interesting than you could ever imagine. Okay, so right now we're in that waiting period. The birds are up in the trees. And they basically are looking around to make sure the coast is clear, there's no predators, nobody's annoying them. And when it's go time, they're all going to slowly get down closer to the clay, and then the action begins. This is the piece of clay, and we've got our cameras aimed and ready. This toucan is making them a little timid, but eventually one comes down to check it out, and then jumps on. The other macaws now have more confidence that the coast is clear, so a second macaw joins in. And the third. After that, the word is out. We've got ourselves a macaw party. Look at these colors! The whole band of clay on the side of the river is covered in dozens of macaws. We have scarlet macaws, blue and yellow macaws, and red and green macaws, all gathering here just to eat dirt. I'll leave you here for a moment to enjoy the view, but the big question is why? Why eat this dirt? To answer that, someone has to climb a tree up to this macaw nest. So Liz, what are you about to do? Um, we're going to climb Molinero, okay. and we got a couple that has been nesting on this place for the last three years. Okay. She's quite used to humans, so she fights you when she did it. So you got a little battle up there? No way. Yep. I'm going to lower the chicks down and she's going to take some um, biometrics okay. measurements and she's going to check whether or not the chicks are doing fine. And there she goes up. I've climbed this before and let me tell you it is not easy, not to mention my fear of heights. All of these efforts you're about to see are part of the longest running wild macaw research and conservation program in the world, which has helped protect these birds throughout their range. Let's watch and see how it goes at 100 feet up. And remember, Liz is a professional, so no macaws were harmed in any way during this. Don't you, don't you even do. You know this one? You know what this is about. I suggest you leave. Come on, babies. You can do this this way or the other way. It's up to you. To get to the chicks, she first has to get the adults to fly away for a Come bit. On. Come on, babes. One flew off on its own, but the Come other on, is being a little more challenging. Hey. 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 Oh, you're a beautiful bird. That was intense. Now that the adults are gone, it's time to check in on the 
ugly little macaw legs. Bucket comes up. Got it. Bucket secure. And the chicks go in. Liz has to get her height right so that the bucket is flush with the nest to prevent any danger for the chicks. Remember, they're 100 feet up. Monitoring the chicks' health on a regular basis like this is critical to understanding how Come to on. conserve the macaws. Chick number one is in. And then chick number two. While this type of handling can't be done with every bird species, the researchers have measured their impact and found that the macaws here are not negatively affected at all. Do you have it? Ready? Okay, all yours. Wow. Look at those guys. That's the cutest little bucket I've seen in my life. So what are you about to do now? So I'm just going to measure them. Um, so we track their growth by measuring the foot, like the tarsus, which okay. is just this part, and the beak, and then we just sort of have a look at their tail, their feathers, their wings, um, measure those, make sure they're growing properly. Oh these my number gosh. one. Wow, look at those feathers. So these are just the beginnings yeah. of what's going to become. Someday you'll be a big, beautiful bird. <laughs> but right now you look like this. <laughs> They're like yeah. so soft. So this help insulate them? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So they lose body heat pretty quickly. Um, so they need that down to cover them. Hey. <laughs> Hi, beautiful. <laughs> you won't be an awkward teenager forever. Don't worry. Amazing. All right, let's get to the science. Here's how they collect data and check the health of the chicks. First into the big orange bowl to be weighed. Then some beauty shots to show its growth and measurements of its feet. And of course, I volunteered for the tough job of keeping this one warm. It's important to remember that this isn't all for fun. This is part of a 30-year game-changing research project in this forest, which has taught us how to better conserve these birds, both here in Tambopata and throughout their entire range. As for the chicks, they actually have a higher survival rate than non-handled chicks because as a trained vet, Shannon will give medical care to those chicks in need. But remember, we also want to know why the adults eat mud. So, what's so important about that dirt? Uh, so it's, it's sodium, it's a source of sodium. So it's a really, um, the environment doesn't really have much sodium in here, like the soils and everything. The clay is from millions of years ago and it's got a high sodium content. So these guys go down there and, and that's where they get most of their sodium from. And during the breeding season, do they go for the clay more to feed the chicks? Definitely, yeah. Got it. So that's why right now they're putting on such a show at the clay lake. Exactly, yeah. To feed this little guy. Yeah. So you like to eat dirt too. <laughs> yeah. You see, the Amazon rainforest is rich in many things, but it is not rich in minerals like salt. So you get some interesting behaviors like, like eating mud to make up for this. Yeah. Back into the bucket they go, and up to the top, where their parents are waiting for them. Coming up. And now it's time for us to scout out another special wall of mineral-rich clay, and hope we see more macaws. And we did. This time, it's not just macaws. We also have a mealie parrot here, and if you look up, we have a blue-throated piping guan, 
which is in an entirely different group of birds. So clearly, macaws aren't alone in the need to supplement their diet with minerals. This was one of the most incredible moments in nature I've ever had, as one after another scarlet macaw came in and out to partake in this unique behavior which helps ensure the health of the next generation. When it comes to conservation, it's important for us to know what's important for the animals we're trying to protect, which is why the Tambopata Macaw Project has done such a fantastic job at ensuring we'll be seeing colorful, mud-loving macaws for generations to come. We'll see you next time on The Jungle Diaries, and if you want to donate to this project, you can find the link below.